All right, everybody, thanks for joining the Raiders roster report tonight. It's April 15th. Uh, we're getting close to the draft. Uh, this is Raider Sparks. And tonight we're going to talk about uh, one of the big moves today uh, from the Raiders and how it affects the roster. Uh, Mo Hurst, uh, one of our draftees from uh, a few years ago, was let go. And uh, the reasons why? Well, I think uh, a couple of reasons. One, you can look at um, an obvious financial reason. We saved 2.2 or roughly that around the uh, cap number, uh, which puts us with Arden Key uh, leaving the team as well, puts us currently at 6.3 uh, on the cap. So we have 6.3 million right now uh, to play with. However, our draft class is going to be around 8.5 million. So we still don't have enough to cover our upcoming draft class, which means there's going to be more cuts coming, and especially if we're going to uh, – bring on a veteran DB or another safety or any other position, uh, there's going to have to be multiple cuts. And if you if you wanted to check out, if you want to know how we get Richard Sherman, I did a video on that uh, a couple videos ago on the salary cap and who we'd have to cut. And uh, Mo Hurst and um, Arden Key were two of the players mentioned. There's uh, a couple others that would have to be cut to bring on Richard Sherman, but um, it's out there. Um, so that's, that's one reason financially. Uh, the other reason – that you could look at is uh, probably more along the lines of Gus Bradley. What he might be thinking is um, is basically Mo Hurst is a three three tech. Um, if you look at the players that uh, Gus Bradley's brought in, um, Solomon Thomas, Quentin Jefferson, David Irving, Darius Fallone, and we won't count uh, Dickerson because I don't think he's gonna make the team anyways. But uh, oh, and Kendall Vickers as well. So those five guys are, are basically listed as, a, I guess, our three technique. But all of them are also defensive ends. So he wants players that can move up and down the line and uh, and rush from different angles, different places on the line. Well, Mo, Mo, that's not his game. Um, another thing to consider, and this is big with the Raiders on multiple positions, is Mo's a, a smaller a defensive tackle, meaning small. Uh, for 290-pound uh, lineman is not small, but he's 6'1", right? And all the others are, you know, 6'3", 6'4", 6'7", 6'3", and Kendall Vickers, uh, and longer arms. So he only has 32-inch arms. Um, wingspans is 76. So he doesn't really fit the uh, profile either. So I think there was a big mixture. I mean, uh, obviously, and it was at the end of his contract anyway. So it's better for Mo. He can go uh, get a shot somewhere else. But I just don't think, you know, financially, I, I think if you, from Mayock's standpoint, it, it made sense to let him go since you brought these other guys in. And, and I think Gus, from a from a, a trait standpoint of what he's looking for in the tackle, I don't think Mo actually meets that requirement. Um Plus Solomon Thomas, I mean he's he's guaranteed two point seven million, or if you cut him, it's two point seven against the cap. Quentin Jefferson, two million against the cap. Um, so those two guys, I'm very confident they're going to uh, to make the team. Um, so and, and I believe there'll be three or four uh, three techniques that make the team, and there'll be five or six defensive tackles altogether, depending if we have the fifty five man roster or the fifty three man roster, because he rotates a lot. Um, I would say right now the front runners for the three technique would be Solomon Thomas, Quentin Jefferson, and David Irving. Uh, Falone is going to be uh, and Vickers will probably be camp, uh, you know, a camp battle. I would say. Um, I think right now Vickers, I think would even have the upper hand because of his length and what he did last year. He's 6'3", 295, 10 and three quarters arms and thirty or thirty four and a quarter inch arms and ten and a quarter inch hands, eighty one inch wingspan. I mean, he is long. He can play the DN. And Falone hasn't played in, uh, I believe, two years. He was very productive. But, again, his profile doesn't quite match up to the other guys as far as he's 6'1", so he's and 32 and a third-inch arm. So he doesn't quite meet the profile. But I think I think one of those guys will, will uh, be on the 55. Um, and also I believe that um, somebody were brought in, uh, too, because uh, like Darius Falone, he's the 55. First player on a roster, right? So he doesn't really move the needle much as far as uh, money, and there's nothing guaranteed to him. Uh, Kendall Vickers is under the 51 man cut anyway, so no matter what he does, he doesn't affect the salary cap right now. So that's there's that as well financially. Uh, but we also have to protect Solomon Thomas as well. Uh, I mean, he, he's coming off a knee injury, so they may not be certain what they're going to get from him right away. So you bring on extra guys just to make sure you uh, sort of fill the gap. But um, 
anyways, those are some of the reasons why I think Mo was was let go, and, and I wish him the best. You know, once a Raider, always a Raider. So hopefully, he lands somewhere good. Uh, and then I'll just go through some uh, some other tackles that are going to be in the draft, um, and kind of give you my uh, impressions real quick, and kind of where they might be drafted, and why it might be a fit for the Raiders. Uh, first and foremost, Christian Barmore, uh, by far the best D tackle in the class. I actually think he makes the most sense as our 17th pick, or hopefully we trade back a little bit and get him if he's still there. Uh, but tremendous. I mean, this guy is a game changer. Uh, we need a one technique. I mean, uh, he plays three, he plays five, he plays one, he plays all up and down the line, so he's very versatile. I know we have uh, Hankins on the line uh, as our one technique, but he's a run stopper, and traditionally uh, Gus Bradley likes a one technique that's a run stopper and a, and a one technique that's a pass rusher. So this would give us that. It would give us more depth at the three technique. He can kick out the five. I mean, what an athlete he is. He's a game changer. Just watch the playoff games for Alabama. Um, and he, you will see a tremendous athlete and a player that the Raiders should draft. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about uh, the right tackle position, the safety position, but, I mean, if you break down the draft and we'll go through the tackle stand, it might make more sense of what I'm saying, but the draft is so deep in safeties. Trayvon Mo Mooring is everybody's consensus. I think number one overall pick for the Raiders. In fact, people kind of – tend to get a little upset when you, when you uh, disagree with it. But the reason I don't think it should be is because, one, safety is you know devalued so much in the NFL that I saw right now PFN had him at uh, in the second round. Um, and I'm using PFN numbers as I go through the stats. Barmore is definitely a, a first-round pick. Um, so so there's that. But um, but also, I mean, it's the safety class is so deep. After Mooring, my, my top two free safeties are in the fourth round, Caden Stearns and Tyree Gillespie. So, I mean, that, that's how deep this draft is. And there's a lot of safeties out there uh, to get. So I don't, I don't see uh, the need. Uh, you know, we have a need for it, but I, with Carl Joseph coming in, playing our free safety spot, I think, uh, I think Barmore here makes more sense. I know, I know the offensive tackle is huge as well. Uh, there's a good chance we do do the offensive tackle there, but there's also a lot of depth at offensive tackle. In a, a previous video, I broke down exactly what uh, Tom Cable will be looking for in his defensive tackles, and the most notable was uh, Stone Forsyth meets all the requirements, played really well at Florida, and he's projected in the third round. So there's talent out there uh, for, for these positions. However, defensive tackle, uh, really drops off. I mean, you have Christian Barmore is far and away superior. He's able to play all position on the defensive line. We, we have an opening right now for uh, one technique, so you put him in there as a one technique, as the pass rushing one technique, three technique. He would totally fill out the roster for our defensive tackles. Uh, it would be an awesome look. And, you know, we started the offseason saying that we had to increase our pass rush. The front seven, Gus Bradley said, was the most important. So if that's true, then Barmore should be in – Hopefully will be the pick. At least that's where I'm at on April 15th, and this could definitely change. So, um, and again, if they've got mooring or, or offensive tackle, I wouldn't be mad. I mean, it, it makes sense, but I just the way I look at the draft, the Christian Barmore it right now makes the most sense. Uh, another uh, versatile D tackle, Tommy Togi. Uh, hopefully, I said that right out Ohio State. Um, he played a lot of uh, nose tackle or one technique for them, uh, but I think he's better suited for a three technique, although uh, it would be interesting. He's projected to be a second rounder and super strong, uh, super strong guy, 37 reps, um, that type of thing. Um, can play both. Uh, he's a little, would be a little bit undersized. He's a 296, but I think he played most of the year at 305. He probably was training for the combine and lost a little bit. The only problem I have with him is six, six one and a half. It's a little shorter. But he's small hands, eight and seven eighths, and thirty-one and three quarters inch arms, which is way under what uh, traditionally the Raiders would get in a seventy-six wingspan. So I'm not sure. Although Pro Football Network uh, put out an article and he listed the Raiders as a landing spot for for him, uh, we know how they like their Ohio State players. So you know that that could be the reason he did run a four-six forty. So he's very athletic, very explosive. So if we got him in the second round uh, to be our uh, Pass rushing one technique and then be able to kick out to the three technique. That's something that uh, that could be interesting as well. Uh, another guy here that I think can play all over the line is Barbara Wilson. A little, little controversial uh, player. Um, two years ago, he probably was a, a first-round talent. Or one year ago, even a first-round talent. This past year, not so good. He could play uh, one technique, three technique. He could probably even kick out a little further. 
33 inch arms. This is on this smaller side, but doable. 82 inch wingspan, so he makes up there. And nine and three quarters hands, so he's good. A little slower, 542, 40 time, 811, broad jump, 491. Short shuttle and a 764 three cone, so semi athletic. Only 23 on the bench, so his his profile doesn't match, but his game tape. Sometimes his game tape is off the charts, awesome, and sometimes it's not. You saw it at the Senior Bowl, like every every fifth rep or so, you like, wow, that guy's really good. And then all the other reps, he wasn't good at all. He seemed like he was out of shape and wasn't ready. So definitely some concerns, but I mean, if you you know, uh, if Marinelli can get it, get in his ass a little bit and get him coached up and motivated, uh, he's projected as a round five pick. That would be a tremendous pickup because he was complete the roster for sure and uh, give us that uh, the player that we would be looking for. Um, and, and the three guys I just mentioned, Barmore, Tojiai, and Wilson, I mean, we picked them, then defensive class is done. If we go the other route and get a, a three-tech, then we still need a one-tech. So, I mean, there's... Some things to uh, to think about there. Uh, anyways, so um, so after that, so we'll look at the three techs. So Osa Odijual, <laughs> I can't say his last name, uh, UCLA guy, one of my favorite guys in the draft. Uh, shined at the Senior Bowl. He was tremendous. Uh, his brother that plays in the league, so he's got the uh, the pedigree. He's a uh, – and that's the, the thing that uh, – one of the reasons I have him on here is because he's one of the players that is a three technique and also a defensive end, which is what apparently Gus Bradley wants. If you look at Thomas Jefferson, Irving, Vickers, Fallon, they're all D tackles, three techniques, and also defensive ends. So it fits the profile of what uh, what they'd be looking for. Uh, also, also has the physical traits, 10 and 3 eighths hands, 34 and 8th arm, 84 wingspan. Had a 40 time of 474, uh, broad jump of 10, and he also, uh, let's see here, also did 25 reps, so he's strong as well. And he, again, had a good season, very productive, has the numbers to back it up. And he's looking as a fourth rounder. So, I mean, if we were in the fourth round and we picked him, I mean, that would be a great pickup. Obviously, you'd just bring in more depth. It would bring in, um, also bring in competition, right, uh, for the three technique and the defensive ends. So, I wouldn't be mad at it. Um, it is pretty cramped room right now. I think uh, I think Solomon Thomas and Quentin Jefferson are definitely in. David Irving probably is in, so there's not a lot of room outside of that, but Osa would be a great pickup. And plus, all of our D tackles are only on one-year contract, so we need somebody with some long term. So if we got Osa in the fourth round, I think that would be uh, I think that would be fantastic. Um, and I just wanted to uh, back up one second. There was another guy that does play the one tech and the three tech is Jonathan Marshall out of Central Arkansas. Um, not as much sack production, but uh, overall he did he did okay numbers. He had a great combine, uh, very athletic, uh, 6'3", 310, uh, 47740, which is really good, 32 vert, which is good, 36 reps on the bench press, so he's super strong, but it has to do some of that with his arms, 32 and a half, so a little shorter. Um then you might want, but I mean, uh, a late round guy. Um, I think he's projected in the third or fourth round. I want to say uh, from PFN. Other draft sites have him almost undrafted. So there's going to be a law. Or I oh, actually, you know what? PFN has him round five. So that would be a good pickup in round five because he does both. If if we weren't able to get uh, Barmore, Toji, or Wilson. Uh, Jonathan Marshall, you know, picking him up in the fifth round to sort of complete our roster would not be a bad thing. Um, so then let's go down here and we'll look at Tiquan Graham out of Texas. Uh, he does, he plays the three tech, four tech, so he can kick outside a little further, which is obviously what, uh, what Gus wants. Uh, he's projected by PFM as a six round pick, six, three, two ninety, thirty four 34 seven, eight inch arms, 85 and eighth wings, uh, uh, wingspan, 10, five, eight hands. So physically he has the tools that we'd be looking for four, nine, four, 40, uh, 32 and a half third, 9 five broad jump, 4 eight, nine short shuttle, and 32 reps on the bench press. This guy's a really good player. I'm not sure why he's only in six round. I think it's just some of the production, some of the technical issues. But as far as all the physical traits, this guy has it, everything. We look at him, he's huge. Um, would be a tremendous pickup for us. Uh, but again, crowded room with that three technique. But uh, we are late in the draft now in the sixth round. So if we ended up getting him there, 
I think that's more than worth it. So I would put him on the radar in your sixth round for you doing your mock drafts as a, a potential candidate. Um, so now if we look at the one techs only or the nose tackles, but far away, Ali McNeil is the is the best one. Uh, no doubt, no doubt about that. Um, so he's six uh, two, three twenty, a little bit of short arms, thirty two and five eighths. Uh, but he did run a four nine four forty, which is great for a guy that size. Twenty seven reps on the bench. Uh, he gets in the backfield in his career, seventeen and a half tackles for loss. Not as many sacks, but I think he's one of these players when he gets NFL coaching and gets some pass rush moves. He has that pass rush potential. So. I know that we have Hankins already as our one technique, and so you're kind of bringing in a similar player as, as a run stuffer, which he is. But I think there's some upside there, some untapped uh, potential for some pass rush. The only problem that I have with this pick, it's round two. I don't know if we want to do a one technique uh, or pick a one technique in round two, maybe a little early. Um, if we trade it back and end up with two second round picks, you know, we trade back in the first and get that extra second. Um, then there's a possibility. So just keep him on the radar. Um, so another guy uh, that uh, you could have on the radar is Tyler, uh, Tyler Shelvin. Big dude. Obviously, you can see by the picture, uh, LSU guy. One technique, uh, run stopper. So this is Jonathan Haken. So Jonathan Haken is a one-year deal. If we want to get him a backup to do a similar things and stop the run, this would be uh, this might be the guy to do it. The only problem is projected in the fourth round, which, again, Fourth round's not bad, but still maybe a little early. 6'2", 350, 33, and 5 eighths arms, 10 and a quarter hands, 540, um, 40 time, 9'7", broad jump, 505, three cone, or 505 short shuttle, 815, three cone. So, you know, obviously that a man that size is not going to be super fast or quick, and you don't want him to be. He just needs to be super strong, and on tape he shows that he's super strong, and he can definitely stop the run. So uh, uh, another one technique is one of my uh, my favorites in the draft, Tedrell Slanton out of Florida. Uh, one technique. PFM has a uh, uh, going in the seventh round. I've seen other box that has them up in like the you know bottom four, top five type projection. Um, I'll be honest with you, this is the guy that when I, I watched him uh, of all these tackles, probably the most tape on him, and I was surprised by the combine numbers. He looked. Uh, a lot uh, different on film. And, and, but his combat number is 6'4", 330, 9 and 8 uh, hands. was a little small, 32 and 5 eighths arms, 80-inch wingspan. So a little bit smaller on the arms. 5'09", 40, which is good, right, for a guy that size. Uh, 29 vert, 9'1", broad jump, 4'8", short shuttle, and 7'9", 3 cone, 27 reps, um, and that type of thing. But he actually seemed even quicker to me. Uh, on film, like he has light feet. I don't know how a guy that size would have light feet, but um, he, to me, he has a, a, like a Lee McNeil, a lot of untapped tap pass rush ability. So I think he would be a tremendous pick. If we got in round seven. If we pick, got him in round seven, that would be awesome because he is a great run stuffer. He's super strong. He's a big dude. He can play the one technique. But there's pass rush moves there. He showed it sometimes in college, but I just think uh, with some better coaching, we'd have a heck of a pass rush on our hands here. And uh, I would love it if he ended up being a Raider, especially if we got him in the seventh round. Okay? And the last one is Quentin Mohan, another large dude like Tyler Shelvin uh, out of Kentucky, uh, projected in the seventh round, 6'4", 327. But he's got 34-inch uh, arms, 10, 7, 8 hands, 80, 7, 8 uh, wingspan. So he's got the prerequisite, the long arms, big hands, 5.3440, 5, uh, 40, so he's athletic, 29 vert, 8.3 broad jump. So he is a total run stuffer. Uh, I don't think as much as a pass rush, but if we wanted to get somebody longer term, and get somebody trained under Hankins, uh, this would be a, a pick possibly. And and why not in the seventh round take a shot if we haven't gotten one of the other guys. But uh, anyways, that's the end of the uh, Raiders roster report for tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, maybe circle some of those guys for your uh, mock drafts and some possibilities. But, um, again, Barmore is far and away the best, and there's a significant drop-off after that. Uh, we go all the way down to the fourth round, I think, before we would pick anybody else. So it would be Barmore in the first or well, I don't think we'd get a D tackle till uh, till somewhere in the, the fourth, unless we went with uh, Tojiai. Second round is a possibility, but I kind of doubt it just because he's 31 inch arms. Uh, I know that uh, Pro Football Network did project him as possibly going to the Raiders, but some tells me he may not be the the fit for us. Ali McNeil, I only see that in the second round if we get a, a second second round pick. Um, other than that, everybody is. Uh, 
fourth round and, and down. So that's about it. Thanks for tuning in tonight. And uh, until next time, go Raider Nation.